Okay, so today I want to do uh, some more biophysics and we're going to go over some prerequisites again. This is uh, examples of the Fourier transform. So examples of the Fourier transform. So we're talking a little bit more about this concept Fourier transforms forms okay and so what so, so what are the two examples so the first example is kind of a visual one okay so I talked about what the Fourier transform does and sort of what it is in sort of a detailed in-depth way in the past video here I just want to go over two simple examples hopefully this won't take too long so the first one is a visual example and we want to, so what I want to do here is I'm going to draw the Cartesian coordinate system. That's not very good. There we go. And I want to, let's see, I'll do this in a different color. Do this in blue. And I want to consider a simple sine curve this is actually sine curve starts right here I'll just do it like that so we're going to assume this is a perfect drawing of a sine curve which I know it isn't we, so sine curve passes it's anti-symmetric and it passes through the origin and so this function is, so say this here is the t-axis or time. This here is our f of x or f of t. And our curve is the sine of t. So, so the, again, the idea behind the Fourier transform is that we are given a function. We're given a function f of t. f of t, which is the sine, in this case, it's the sine of t. And we want to take a look at what its Fourier transform is. The Fourier transform of f of t, by the way, is so instead of the t axis we want the 1 over t axis which is frequency which is the 1 over which is 1 over time that's the Fourier the Fourier transformation and here is our big F of t so our big F of t is our Fourier transform. And usually the Fourier transform is denoted with a fan, uh, like a big fancy F. So Fourier transform of F of t. Like that. And sometimes there's a big fancy T in here too, the Fourier transform of F of T. So what is, so the Fourier transform of F of T, so of the sine curve, is going to look like this. Two Dirac delta functions at a particular location, at two particular locations in frequency. And those locations and frequency are the frequent is the frequency of the sine curve. Okay, so that's what I was talking about. Uh, Fourier transforms being symmetric in our last video. This here is the frequency f. And this is the frequency negative f in the negative direction. So where does that show up here? The show, it shows up in this equation right here, Fourier transform of f of t. Okay, 
this is sort of the visual example, right? So let's actually prove this. And I want to start off with uh, considering now this function. We want to, so this function right here, we want to take the Fourier transform of that. And we actually want to see if we can get a sinusoidal pattern out of taking that Fourier transform. And before I do that, let's set up the problem. So the problem is we're going to define this as two delta functions, one at frequency negative v naught and the other one at frequency uh, positive v naught. I want to get us introduced to different notations here. So sometimes this, cur this curly v here is a frequency. And then we're just going to divide all this by 2. Dividing by 2 doesn't really do much. Okay, but it's going to make our calculations a little bit easier. Okay, so let's, so let's calculate the Fourier transform of this to see if we can get the sine or the cosine out of this. This might end up being the cosine, but nevertheless, the cosine also has a set, uh, the cosine of f of t has a similar frequency of the cosine of the sine of f of t. So f of t equals, if we remember our equation for our Fourier transform, the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of our, of our function, which is delta e v naught plus delta function v plus v naught over 2 and we need this e to the negative i 2 pi uh, frequency times time factor and we're integrating over all frequencies because we are decomposing or this is a, this in this case uh, we've already decomposed we're going we're anti decomposing to get to find out what f of t is okay so let's go ahead and I'll do this down here. So the delta function, if we remember something about the delta function, that when we multiply it by any function, it basically just weeds out the point of the function at which that delta function is located at. Right? I'm going to assume that you know some of this already, but if you don't, I'll just say that the delta function of x minus at x naught when multiplied by any function of x it's going to be zero everywhere when x is not equal to x naught so it's going to be equal to zero so actually this is typically written like this equal to zero when x does not equal x not and one when or not one f of x when x is equal to x not. 
So this is sort of a weeding out process. So we can actually do this now, where we have this function here times this delta function. That's going to give us e to the negative i 2 pi v naught. This is going to be x naught right here. X naught t plus e to the positive, because this is a positive right here, i 2 pi v naught t divided by 2. Okay, so now what we can do is we can take a look now at this right here. We can actually decompose this. Again, I'm assuming you know some stuff from like calculus and calc uh, um, some of the other courses because in this series we I tend, I intend to go into more advanced stuff. Okay. So this is going to be the cosine of negative 2 pi v naught t plus i sine negative 2 pi v naught t that is just this right here. So I'll put that in brackets. And then plus cosine, I'll do another brackets, cosine of 2 pi v naught t plus i sine of 2 pi v naught t. And then all of that divided by 2. Divided by 2, like that. Okay, well, well now we can do some cancellation. This here, the negative of the sign is just going to be I can get rid of that negative there, and that's going to, since the sign is anti-symmetric, we're going to be able to do that. And then we'll be able to cross these guys off, because this is a minus of this, so one cancels the one out, the other out. The negative of the cosine, again, is just the cosine, because it's symmetric. And what we end up getting is 2 is equal to 2 cosine of 2 pi v naught t over 2. And then this is why we put the 2 there. This is the same thing as just the cosine of v naught t. So this is a single sinusoidal function with the frequency v naught and its Fourier transform is this. So he calculated that the Fourier transform of this right here is this. So likewise we could do a similar calculation to show that the Fourier transform is this, of this is this. But we showed now that these two guys are the Fourier transform of each other. We have uh, two peaks. So this is two Dirac delta. Dirac delta functions. Functions. And this is a, a sinusoidal. Uh, function. 
And there, the, the, the two of them are Fourier transforms of one another. You could see, so if we wanted this to be a sine, we'd have to, we'd have to get, we'd have to somehow get the cosines to cancel out, right? In which case, we would want to, we, we want, we would want this count calculation to give us, uh, we would want this calculation to give us something like, uh, we, we would basically want this to set up this equation, which we can do such that we would, uh, we would be able to read the sine functions out. It's a little bit harder because of this I right here. But nevertheless, we would be able to do this because um, that's just, this is just the complex part of the Fourier transform. And oftentimes, the complex part of the Fourier transform is not the part we're interested in. We're interested in the real part, especially in biophysics. Because in biophysics, so I'll go over a little bit of biophysics. Because in biophysics, what we do, what we're, well, a lot of stuff that we're interested in, it's not just um, studying living cells and stuff like that we actually are in a lot of times we're interested in say we have a cell or say we have some protein right we have some protein here's this is our protein and we we shine we shine some light you shine a photon at this molecule and it has a particular frequency h nu that's our initial frequency and then the the protein itself the molecule itself has uh it will um, it will scatter the light will scatter and we can measure we can measure long wavelength any long wavelengths that might come out. We can measure uh, maybe some any longer wavelengths that might come out. The red, as sometimes this might uh, actually end up giving us some higher energy, right? And so essentially what this is doing is this is some light, okay? We're shining it at our object, and then our object undergoes, and then our light undergoes some scattering process. And what's interesting is that the interface, this protein or this molecule, uh, sort of acts as like a Fourier transform if we shine complicated light or some complicated waveform of light at the molecule. And we're decomposing again this wave function into other wave functions. And by looking at that pattern, we're essentially what we're essentially doing a Fourier transform. Right? We we start with we start with some complicated pattern. So this so this might be actually if to be a little bit more it might look like this. Right. And then our molecule will actually scatter and the scattering process is the Fourier transform process. And then we can measure all the we can measure all of the different frequencies that come out of this. Okay, so this again is this is why the Fourier transform is very important. It's gonna, this is going to show up in cryo-EM. It's going to show up in almost every type of spectroscopy we'll study. Okay. And with that being said, before I end this, the plan here now, biophysics is somewhat of a very sparse subject. And like I mentioned in the first video on biophysics, it's often the case where we lear we'll learn something like uh, anti-Stokes. Just for example, anti-Stokes uh, Raman spectroscopy.
And then the next week you might learn like uh, Fourier, not Fourier, uh, fluorescence. And then the concept of fluorescence can be broken down into uh, many, many different subtypes of spectroscopies. Spectroscopies, and you might spend a week on one type and a week on another type, and all this stuff, all these different types of spectroscopies and microscopies seem to be related perhaps to some degree, but these are tools. These are tools. So when you go to the lab, these are tools, and you're sort of, they're, each one is like their own modality in some sense, where you learn about it and then you move on. And then you learn about it and then you learn about the next one and then you move on. And there's actually very few, uh, there's very few concepts in the way of linking all this stuff together. Right? This isn't something like GR where, uh, where, our, where the where the curvature tensor is related to the Christoffel symbol, which is related to the metric tensor. It's, it this doesn't really build up on itself like that. Is, it, it doesn't really build up on itself like that, and so we have to be able to sort of learn each modality as they come to us, and so the plan is going to be to actually decompose papers, papers and books, so that we can uh, look at these as if they were their own modalities. And I'm on, I'm on no time crunch here. So with that being, so, so, so I'm on no time crunch, and so we will be able to go over a lot of these different types of spectros spectroscopies in depth, okay? So one one day, for example, I might do a paper on anti-Stokes, okay? And don't be intimidated by the length of these by the length of these videos uh, that I intend to make here from here on out. Um, what I would recommend doing is. The, 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 these videos might end up being something like one or two hours, maybe even three hours. What I would recommend doing is taking them piece by piece. Don't listen to the whole thing all at once. Okay, Th this is what I used to do with my classes. I used to, uh, I used to um, record my classes and then go over them piece by piece later, and that would help me retain the information better. Okay, but that's the plan. And with that being said, I hope I haven't scared you off and I will see you guys in the next video.